So after a two week drought, we finally have One Piece Chapter 973 out. We got no episode this week due to the Japanese women's marathon. So this is as good as we're gonna get. And I have to say, I think we all believed the flashback was over. He's gonna go back into Onigashima in the present time. But even though Odin's journey came to an end in the last chapter, we actually still have the flashback of this chapter, which given what we have revealed, I don't really mind because I think I know why Odin did it. It's because the pacing is gonna be super fast when we get into Onigashima. So this plot point needed to be resolved. That being obviously the identity of Denjiro, which we, I think we can all agree to some extent we had an idea it may have been him from the beginning, but Oda did have, did a pretty good job of convincing us maybe it's somebody else just because of the the hairdo. But no, it's, it's pretty much confirmed who it is. We start off with the cover page. We have Gotti who blew up one of the marine ships, which is good on him because hopefully he can get Beige Capone and Chiffon, and if you look closely, you can see Chiffon in a, in a cage. So anyway, the first few pages are like dedicated to like the memories that Odin and Raja shared with Momonosuke and Hiyori and Toki's perspective. And I did find it funny how like Odin is talking to his son about what girls do you like, and you have Rayleigh there. It's way too soon for him. Like, and you got Hiyori, little Hiyori playing the guitar, which becomes super important by the end of the chapter because we see her playing the guitar anyway we get back to the site the palace where it's burning and it, it appears out of nowhere so first off we have the scabbard who left the execution site so they're still being tailed you got kiniman and okiku and company still put in the work nekomomushi and inarashi predictably got left behind because of a bickering between one another about who was responsible for odin's death they get left behind you have Denjiro and Ajra Doji, which is funny because we know those two actually had a brief encounter with Kaido. So they have to leave Nekomobushi in and Ash behind. Meanwhile, while this palace is going on, you have the uh, uh, Kuri, the palace is being burnt, it's been set on fire. You have the cal calamities, and, and you can clearly see a, a silhouette of what appears to be king. But yeah, I, I do have to give props to Toki. She tried to Hold down the fort, even though it, the odds were against her. Out of nowhere, here comes Kaido. It doesn't look good for Momonosuke, and I will say this. Kaido could have killed Momonosuke from that fall. And the more I see... And that palace is freaking huge, by the way, because the size of Kaido, he's like a, the size of Oz, and we know how big he was. But this palace is huge, and Kaido just looks like an average, normal-day person, which we know that's not the case. So I just thought that was super funny. Instead of like just fall, dropping Momonosuke, he just throws it back into the palace and like, you know what, I'm just going to burn you alive. So, I'm not going to lie, it did give them a chance to escape, which is kind of dumbfounded the part of Kaido. Now, notice this scene here, because we've seen that, we've seen it in the past, when it comes to the manga, when it comes to like Hiyori, Toki, and Momonosuke. It was in silhouette, but here, we have a clear-cut visual, and now we know why it's silhouetted. So, Okiku... Kinemon, Raizo, and Kanjiro, they get sent into the future a long time, Momonosuke, 20 years. He already goes with Kawamatsu underneath, so I think we've seen this already, but they just go underneath the palace and into the water. So Kawamatsu takes care of Hiyori. I, I still ask why Hiyori couldn't have like been sent with Momonosuke, but that's I think we're going to get clarification of why. It wasn't mentioned in this chapter, so I thought, okay, there's got to be something else to it. So I still think that's weird. What's really crucial, we did not know this. Like, after this takes place, we have a horse, and we have, obviously, Lady Toki riding through the forest. Like, she's trying to get to a certain area, and she's going to spill the beans about the prophecy. But if you notice the panel where she's talking, or she's puffing, it's like she's holding something, so I don't know if that's a Den the Mushi or whatever. But after that, we get the the prophecy. After endless moonlit nights, after 20 years, nine shadows will bring, bring a blinding sunrise. And it does imply that Lady Toki dies because she falls, but she doesn't burn in the castle. So that so that we did not know. Cut to a, a I guess, a bath for Orochi. And this dude's a straight up pansy because... One tip of a boiling hot bath, and oh, it's too hot, it's too hot, 
I can't deal with this because it already was because he was stood a hot boiling pot of oil for an hour and this guy couldn't even last a second in hot water. So we get to see what he already went through for her perspective. So we see a shot of Arja Doji and I do want to point out though, Orochi freaking out. I need proof that they're dead because they don't see the bones. So he wants proof that Momonosuke and company are dead, which we know. That the part of the chapter is going to have a lot of people talking. So then we see Denjiro, and the next shot we see him, Denjiro gets a makeover, and this confirms the fact that he is, in fact, Kiyoshiro. So he assumes that identity. You also find out it's the Hour Witching Boy, which we kind of figured it was Kiyoshiro anyway, but we kind of figured it was Denjiro anyway, but now we know who it is. We got that plot point revealed. I said previously that I think before the flashback ends, we're going to have to find out what happened to Denjiro, how he got separated. So, Kiyoshiro family formed. He serves under Orochi, but we know he's got something in mind. He goes around, he steals from the witch, gives to the poor. It's a Robin Hood of the Wano. It's confirmed. So, Lady Hiyori breaks away from Kawamatsu and then bumps into Denjiro, aka Kiyoshiro. And this, I think this confirms the fact that two, those two cannot be like the spies anymore like Kiyoshiro and Hiyori, just because there's no point in revealing the fact that Kiyoshiro is working under under Orochi. There's no point. So, so and Hiyori recognizes it immediately. Like, Denjiro, really? Yeah, it's me. But I want you to keep this a secret. And we see her growing up. Like, we see, like I said, we see her playing the guitar, and it ends with the panel of her assuming the identity of Kumurasaki, which puts... This puts down the theory that a lot of people had that Kurumurasaki and Hiyori were two different people. And this chapter completely blew that theory out the window. At the point, we got the reveal. So now we can move along. I think it's safe to say we should be going into the press because there's nothing to like draw out anymore. I Oda decided to have this reveal now because we still have a trait in the midst. So we could find out that it's one of the scabbards, I think, but we don't know who. But the battle in Onigashi was about to take place. And the fact that they're going along with this plan, the fact they're revealing this now instead of later on, means they're going to have some type of role in the final battle. At least cut Hiyori to some extent. Remember what she said to Zoro? Like, I want to be the one that take out Orochi. I don't think that's going to happen, but she may get, she may witness the downfall of Orochi, as will Momonosuke. But I thought it was a steady chapter, got things... It was simple to the point and it got explained. Denjiro's identity got confirmed. Kiyoshiro, it does make a lot of sense. And I always knew something was off the moment he slashed, quote unquote, Hiyori or Komorosaki, believing she was dead. I, I said that was bullshit for the moment we saw Hiyori again. Because if she took that kind of wound, there's no way she should be alive. The way he was introduced, like he was bad mouthing Orochi while he was drunk. So something was off right away, and how he was talking when he was confronted by Zoro, like, oh, I'm just trash, I'm just lowly trash. I don't know what this means for Hiyori, because now this is revealed, she has to have some type of importance to like, the downfall of Orochi. Because she'd been assuming this identity for that reason, so. I thought it was an okay chapter after two weeks away, and let me know what you guys think down below. That's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this review if you did. Subscribe to for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.